well-placed lady. Uh, and it says that these women bankrolled the disciples. They really did. I'm not lying. It's in the book. And then, and then at the end of the story, it's the women who see Jesus, who encounter him. Really? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I wrote a. I wrote an article uh, at my uh, the Apostles once, and, and women's work is kingdom work. Uh, and it's the men that need to hear this. Yeah. Some of my family members are Catholic, and there's others of us that go a different direction. And one of the young guys is going into the priesthood. <coughs> do anything to change things, or will it not work? You know, I'm, I'm raising the, the, the larger question of Christianity in this country in which the Catholic Church and all the churches are ignoring. They really aren't. And uh, whether you're right or left, like I, I told you, no, I'm, I'm not really enamored by the far-right evangelicals, and I'm, I certainly have trouble with my church, uh, uh, but uh, what's really happening in the country right now as faith is concerned, and this may be the last generation on the planet, who knows, <laughs> is that uh, I find it more important to live out my faith in discipleship with Jesus who ended up on a cross. Uh, uh, because I, I'm, I'm, I believe that that's the answer for the world. I know that's, I know I, I really sound silly when I say that. Because I'm telling you, like, come on, join the train. It's downward, downward mobility, service is the game, find the cross to get you on. Uh, however, I really think that's what this story is all about. Service to others, how to be a human being. And if there's anything we need in the future is examples of human beings being human. Because it's up for grabs. Yes. So you started off your speech saying that you're pro-rich and pro-war. No, I'm not. I say that um, my church is pro-rich, pro-war, oh, and pro-empire. So, I'm against all that. Okay. But um, you stop also mentioned in your speech how you're against, like, probably most farming practices, right? The global uh, way in which we farm uh, the planet based on petroleum, high tech, and capital. Yes. So how would you change that? i decentralize our food systems. I, I, I'd make it a high priority. If I were king of the world, I would divide the world in ecological regions where 90% of everything you get must come from your region and put all your money in rehabbing people to go back into that kind of world so we can regenerate the soil that we've destroyed. So we need to be able to interface in the planet where we're bringing the planet back to life because it's dying and it's the only place we have. And it is us. Uh, because, like I said, us and the cockroaches have a lot more in common than anything out there in the universe you think you're going to discover. So, if you're against farming, like, how are we supposed to live without all the food that the world produces? Like, what are we going to eat? Because everybody in this room is affected by agriculture. We're probably wearing clothes that have been produced in some form of agriculture. We eat food that's produced in agriculture. Meat is produced throughout agriculture. How are we supposed to survive? Well, you know, uh, we need to first ask the right questions and address our attention to that. Currently, I'm a critic of the world food system. I'm a benefactor, too. All the food I serve the poor is the same food you guys eat. I'm not happy with that food, yet I'm doing good with it. But I'm not lying about where it comes from. And I'm not giving the rich a buy. And I'm not giving Iowa State a buy. And I'm not giving my bishop a buy for ignoring Jesus while the world's going to hell. But hey, I'm in the same world and I'm eating the same food. All I would say is I'm spending my time serving the poor. That has some pluses in the world of measurement and faith. But making a lot of money doesn't. Call me crazy. You okay? Yeah, right. So, how 
farmers are essentially helping the poor too because they're getting used the food that we serve to the poor and they don't make a lot of money off of it. Are they really farmers? Farmers that provide our food, yeah. That's an interesting phrase, farmers that provide our food. I don't want to put down the farmers, but <laughs> there were a lot of grocery stores, family grocery stores back in the day, and that, they all got run out. My family's lost them, I get it. But farmers, farm, you know, I love a farmer, but her isn't much more than a technical jockey on the land uh, working for uh, the big oil, uh, the big cattle people, the big pe pig people. And uh, they're not really farming, they're just working for pigs and cattle. To feed the world in a global structure uh, is just, and farmers, uh, like, Farmers have no more or no less responsibility to face up to this and try to do something about it. I have no more or less responsibility than to face up to the global things. And I'm recommending people lean into lives of service to people, learning to live below the poverty line, and how to welcome strangers in your home because they're gonna be more and more strangers on the horizon. Immigration is going to go crazy in this world that's going to start dysfunctioning. Numbers of people being killed or war or famine are going to make the numbers look like nothing right now. If you don't see that coming, I, I do, I feel it. I see it. And our, our farming, it doesn't address it, it locks us in. Uh, the Bible story that uh, speaks to my experience of farming is the story of Joseph. You know, that's Joseph and the mother many colored guy. That Joseph, that guy, that guy who went down to Egypt, his brother treated him bad. I get it. All right, you had a bad family scene. I get it. And he was in jail. I have a lot of respect for people who go to jail. I went to jail. It's no easy thing. He had this gift. He could translate dreams and practice it in jail. And then the Pharaoh found out about it. Remember that he said, I have this dream. I got these five years of fatted cows and then five years of thin cows. And then Joseph says, oh, I know what that is. This is now, this is what's going on. Rural boy goes to big city and gives his soul to the empire. And he says, I know what that is. Uh, that means you're gonna have ten, seven good years in farming and then you're gonna have seven bad years. And the Pharaoh says, oh, what should I do? Well, just buy all the stuff you can when, the, when it's there, and then when the bad years come, you can start sailing off to the farmers, get their cattle, then buy their land, then make them slaves. My lifetime, farming in Iowa is that story. Come back after World War II, Start farming again, and the big story was, get big, get big, get big. And as they got big, oil, high-tech, capital-intense, the stock market 